Okay, uh, but but a, a bit on the premise, uh, this is kind of like a, a last minute preparation. Uh, I'm sorry if there are any um, faults. And today it won't be that much of a scientific thing, but uh, I'd like to just give a bit of fruit uh, for thought and a bit of some general ideas. You might have heard of them, but uh, I guess sometimes it's okay to, be, uh, to have reminders as well. So let me share my screen. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know why I can't share a screen. Oh, can can uh, can you make me co-host? Just to make it. Can't make anyone co-host. Uh, I we don't know why. But Terence is the host. You can't share screen. Just just read from what you have. It's it's it's. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay. So uh yeah. First off, uh, before I get started, I think it's important that I first define what my title means. Um, what is happiness beyond belief? Now, first off, the first part, which is uh, very, uh, I guess, a bit unusual, which is uh, what is beyond belief? And the reason I put this is uh, because I think um, happiness is something that is beyond supernatural belief. Now, I don't mean uh, I'm opposed to any kind of uh, supernatural beliefs. Now, it is your freedom to believe what you want. And I've also known many people who have found fulfillment uh, from religion, and they found that it is important for many. But... I've also, on the other hand, heard of many who propose the idea that religion is the only way, or sometimes specifically uh, their religion is the only way. And I think I strongly disagree with this stance. And for many of the e-religious, I think you would come to this conclusion as well. So um, perhaps I'd like to uh, share some ideas that allow us to, um, that are more universal, um, that stretch beyond religion. And second thing is, well, I mean, like, I'd also like to share some methods that um, fit your needs on, in terms of this without compromising your beliefs and lack thereof. So other than the word belief, what really is happiness? Now, when we think of the word happiness, we often think about a person jumping up to the sky with a big grin on the face. And in fact, if you go online, search Google these things, this is, this is kind of the kind of picture that we most often see. Now, that is one form of happiness, but I think that's not the only one. Now, um, I'd like to share a bit of, uh, on United Nations, they have, um, if you haven't known uh, the United Nations, every year they make uh, something called the UN Happiness Report. And in the report, they basically, um, you know, interview um, people of many different countries, uh, rank them in terms of many of the certain criteria and basically gauge in overall whether people from that country, are, you know, how happy are people from that country. And you will find that for four years consecutively up until 2021, this year, Finland has been rated as the happiest country in the whole world. Now, if we were to take our concept, our notion earlier, that the only type of happiness is this over-the-top energetic one, then the whole Finland nation would probably look kind of like a cult. <laughs> but fortunately, there are documentaries on Finland in which you, know, you can watch online, you can find online, in which you realize that they generally look pretty much like us. No big grins, no skipping around, no cult-like behaviors. In fact, because of how cold their weather is, they generally look very grim on the streets. But further studies uh, for the interviews show that people are in general more, I think a better word than happy is that they are more fulfilled and content with their lives. Now, I think that these words are something that we really have to reflect on because um, for so much of our time, we have this weird mindset, this weird notion of happiness that um, the only way that we can be happy is that uh, is when we get a pay raise, is when we, after we finish our exams, is when we get our newest smartphone or when we have huge feasts with friends. Now, it's not wrong to be happy that way, but we also kind of forget the other kind of happiness or if I want to use a better word for, fulfillment and contentment. Now, when we look around our surroundings, our lives are generally pretty decent. Like, we have water, I mean food, water, and the obvious, uh, electricity and Wi-Fi, which allows us, which grants us so many amenities and so many, uh, you know, opportunities to hold uh, events and conduct our businesses and so on. Now, I know that 
um, many people uh, generally immediately start thinking of things like uh, that uh, of um, starving children in poor foreign countries. Um, yes, it is true that these people are in dire need and we need to help them, but I think we need to generally stop comparing with um, people from poor countries. Like, yeah, sure, you, um, sure, it does make us more grateful, but you don't need a starving child from a poor foreign country to compare yourself to be happy. You don't need to constantly look outwards to look for someone to compare ourselves with to be happy. Because you do realize that we have this idea, okay, if I compare myself to someone below me, I feel happier. If I compare to someone else above me, I feel worse. Um, sometimes, even if the world is well-fed, even if it's a universal utopia, I think we can all still be fulfilled. And looking at things around us and on the basic needs that we already have that are fulfilled on the things such as, um, you know, simple amenities that we have that we know that we ourselves weren't fully responsible for. Someone else has made it for us. Um, in ways, our bodies, our ancestors, our people before us have built did all these inventions that have allowed us better lives. I think this way of looking at um, the world allows us much more fulfillment and contentment. Now, while it isn't eternal, and I don't think there is an eternal way to uh, perfect and long-term ha like happiness all the time, I think it is much more persistent and practical than always looking forward for the next thing or trying to compare yourself to someone else. Now, okay, sorry. <laughs> now, um, I'd also like to talk about um, some techniques, when I say that uh, a group, uh, or should I say, uh, different categories and different methods to happiness that I feel like um, people can deploy besides just having a prop, uh, different mindset. And a word that I feel like is more appropriate to be brought up is mental health care. And I feel like in Malaysia, this idea is very, very um, underappreciated. And many people don't realize how important mental health care is, as, especially as compared to how uh, much emphasis we have on physical health, physiological health care, even though not most, most Malaysians don't apply many of those principles, at least there's a strong awareness of it. But whereas on the other hand, mental health care is something that we are quite lacking. So today I'd like to share some categories, um, some groups of methods in which you can um, apply mental health care to improve your um, emotional well-being and fulfillment of life in general. Now, the first one I like to suggest is, in a very general term, expression, which is in expressing oneself. It might be through writing, it might be through talking to someone else, it might be through um, drawing it out, it might be through the way you decorate your home, it might be through the way you sing when you're in the shower. <laughs> now, these are all different ways of expressions and everyone has to each their own. But I think um, expression, expressing oneself, I guess, is a very, very good way of coping with um, ourselves when it comes to you know, having stressful situations. Now, sometimes when you express or share your, uh, or tell your ideas, uh, your worries, your concerns to someone, that they might, uh, they might give you suggestions, they might give you ideas that help you and improve your, yourself. But even in the event when you come to realize that you know, telling to others might not solve your, uh, wor your concerns, uh, I believe that by giving your feelings a shape, you know, by telling it, putting it into words, uh, whether in a speech or in writing, or whether even into a picture, into colors. I think giving your feelings a form to take on makes it feel better. And it feels like you've done work, you know, to clarify what you feel. And when you express something out, it no longer feels as big and mysterious or as scary as it looks. And I think that is the whole concept behind expressing oneself. It's something that's essential. And I feel like a lot of people keep on missing that idea. Uh, in fact, I think an analogy might demonstrate this very well. I think, for lack of a better word, I think emotions are kind of like shit. <laughs> emotions, if you don't control how or when you release them, when it reaches a breaking point, it will release, it will come out by itself, and you cannot control how or when it comes out. So as I said, 
emotions are like sheep. So you have to control. So it's best to control uh, and find a proper way uh, through which you can express your emotions. Uh, so as I said, through writing, through um, chatting with, with someone, through drawing. Yes, sometimes you might not find a solution to expressing it, but it definitely um, gives it a shape and makes it feel less um, scary. So uh, a second category um, on mental health care in which I think is important, just as important if not more, is on mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is a very abstract word, but if I were to give it a definition, I guess it would be to be more aware of your thoughts, uh, to be more aware of your inner conditions, uh, to be able to experience things more clearly and objectively. Now, there, at least from I know what I know, there are two uh, main ways to do this. Uh, one obvious one is to do, you know, um, I believe some people have done some things like uh, problem solving journaling, in which what they do is that they list down all the methods, all the problems that they face, or a big problem that they face, they break it down and they analyze it step by step. So, so um, an example, um, someone might um, break down their problem into a few packs, um, whether by a different methods to solve or um, a different times to which they solve the method. Maybe this problem is something that you can solve right now. This one is something you have to deal with next week, and this one is next month. And they first look at, okay, this part, they assign maybe some methods that they can do this, a plan that they can execute immediately. Then on the next part, they, could, um, they might have to find someone else's help to do it. And on the final part, they might realize, okay, this is something that I cannot control, that they, I cannot um, determine whether it's going to come out as good or bad. So it's something that the, 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 I guess the reaction is not just how to solve it, but more of how do I emotionally prepare myself to accept both the good and the bad outcomes? So now, oh yeah, okay. Um, and, and the second method, and I, I think this one is uh, especially um, universal for everyone, is even if you cannot analyze problems or if you don't have the uh, skills to, um, sometimes when you're, say for example, approached um, by a stressful event, you can, I think it's sometimes you can just step back and close your eyes and to instead of avoiding the stress, to feel it, to ask yourself, where do I feel the stress? Why do I feel the stress? What about the event that makes me feel the stress? And is it possible that I think of the event without linking it to the stress? So um, doing it in such a way, I know that some people call it meditation, and I think meditation is a very powerful tool, um, even barring the uh, mythical um, association people bring up. So um, these are some methods that I suggest. Um, I know that this uh, is a bit rushed. I apologize for that. But um, basically what I'd like to really conclude is that I think happiness, instead of seeing it as this aesthetic uh, peaks and throws thing that you have to get, you have to earn to get, sometimes you can be happy for some of the most basic reasons. And I think that makes happiness and for a better word, fulfillment becomes much more practical. And there are some ways that we can also take on, uh, which, as I uh, mentioned earlier, include expressing oneself properly and controlling how you express it. Because if you don't, when it comes out, it's not going to come out in the way you like it. And another one is basically mindfulness, being aware of your emotions and feelings. So that would be my sharing. Um, sorry for the rush, and thank you so much. Hey, thanks so much, uh, Grandjet. I think that I thought that was quite quite good. Given that you only had fifteen minutes to 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 present that, I think that thanks so much. Okay. Uh, without further ado, hang on. Huh? Let me see if I can get a better uh presentation. Uh, for Afik, because uh his PowerPoint presentation seems to be stuffing up the um the hi uh the, those aren't my actual slides. I have my actual slides on me right now. So oh, okay. So, so you, 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 you share, you share screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Share great, screen. great, great, great. Because uh, it seems to be stuffing up the the, the audio for, uh, for uh, Zoom. So when I'm I'm recording right now. Share screen. Oh, point. 